Place one cutting plate on the slide axis. Align three holes on the cutting plate with the slide axis. Secure the cutting plates by tightening the three pieces of M3X6 screws using the hex key H2.5. Repeat the process for the second slide axis. Face the LP5. Place the slide extension underneath it with the laser pecker logo on the left side. Connect the cable from the laser unit to the electric stand. Connect the cable from the laser unit accessory USB port to the power input of the slide extension. Connect the conical protective cover to the USB port on the laser unit. Connect the power cable to the laser unit and the power adapter to a stable power supply. Connect the cable from the laser unit to the electric stand. Connect the cable from the laser unit accessory USB port to the power input of the slide extension. Connect the power cable to the laser unit and the power adapter to a stable power supply. Place the material on the slide extension. Use the binder clips from the toolbox to secure thin materials and prevent misalignment during the engraving process. First, click the device connection icon to connect the LDS with the LP5. Click the settings icon in the upper right corner. Then choose the mode setting to enable the slide extension feature. Import a file or create a design. Rotate the image according to your desired engraving orientation. Then set the desired size and position. The red rectangle indicates the maximum engraving area. Make sure your image size is within the area. To achieve optimal engraving results when using a dithering image with a dark colored material, be sure to enable the invert feature. Set up the engraving settings accordingly, then click preview. Just to correct focal distance. Then click continue to view the engraving position dynamically. To adjust the engraving positions, click Exit Preview then move the image to your desired spot within the red rectangle. When everything is ready, follow the steps to start the engraving. Place the pre-cut template onto the cutting plate and secure it using a binder clip from the toolbox to prevent misalignment during engraving. Placing all objects into the slot. The purpose of using the template is for multi-batch engraving. When there are many objects that need to be engraved, the template helps secure the engraving position for each batch. To achieve optimal engraving results, please ensure that the slots in the template are placed as closely together as possible. Complete the connection setup and click the settings icon on the upper right corner, then choose mode setting to enable the multi-file engraving. Follow the guidance to complete the calibration. The multi-file engraving feature allows you to preview the engraving area in a rectangular format. Enable this feature when you want to preview a more precise engraving area. Go back to the creation page, import your file or create a design, and set the desired size and position. Select the image, click grid in the toolbar, then select grid array. You can set the desired number of rows and columns, as well as the spacing to automatically generate several images. Once all set, click OK. Select all the images to set up the engraving settings. Click Preview. Set up the correct focal distance and click on each element in the creation page to review individually. 
Engraving positions can be adjusted by moving the element inside the red box or by adjusting the material on the plate. Once the desired engraving position is found, click next to start the engraving. Place the template onto the cutting plate, placing all objects into the slot. The purpose of using the template is for multi-batch engraving. When there are many objects that need to be engraved, the template helps secure the engraving position for each batch. Complete the connection setup. In this case, the multi-file engraving feature is turned off to demonstrate different preview scenarios based on your need. Go back to the creation page. Import the file and set up desired effect, size, and position. Click variable text from the toolbar on the left. There are five variables options you can choose. In this case, we'll demonstrate how to use the serial number. Adjust the variable settings based on your desired outcome. Scroll down and click add. Then delete the fixed text if you don't need it. Adjust the position of the file and the variable text according to your preference. Select both elements, then click Group in the toolbar to combine them. Click Grid in the toolbar, then select Grid Array. You can set the desired number of rows and columns, as well as the spacing, to automatically generate sequential serial numbers. Once all set, click OK. Select all the elements in the page and set up your desired engraving settings then click Preview to review each image individually. Set up the correct focal distance and adjust the image's spot by moving the image inside the red box or by changing the material position on the plate. Once you've found the desired position, click Next to start the engraving process. In this example, the pre-made template can hold six materials at once. After engraving the initial six materials, Simply replace them with new ones without the need to repeatedly confirm the engraving position and engraving settings. Once the engraving is finished, you can see that another six sequential serial numbers have been automatically generated within the LDS. The materials that can be cut include wood, acrylic, metal, paper, leather, and others. Here we will demonstrate cutting on wood. Place the wood piece onto the cutting plate and secure it using a binder clip from the toolbox to prevent misalignment during engraving. Complete the connection setup and enable slide extension mode in the setting. Go back to the creation page, import multiple cut files or choose multiple cut designs from the LDS. and set their desired size and position. Select all elements to set up the engraving settings and click Preview. Set the correct focal distance and review each element on the preview page individually. Positions can be adjusted by moving the element inside the red box. Once you've found the desired position, click Next to start the batch cutting. If you have any other questions or need further technical support, feel free to contact the LaserPecker support team support at laserpecker.com.